Welcome. We are excited to have you participate in this working conference of the California Consortium on Higher Education for People with Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. Many of you have traveled long distances outside of Southern California, or perhaps like me, you had the stop and go of the LA freeways getting here this morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> but if nothing else, it tells us how important it is to all of you to be here today that we put up with all this crazy freeway stuff. We wouldn't be able to hold this conference without uh, the help of the California Endowment, so I thank them very publicly for this wonderful space that we've used on a number of times, at a number of occasions. And I want to thank the Tarzan Center staff in the back there. There's Beth, there's Irma, there's Rachel, and very importantly, Will Francis for manning, managing all the logistics and conference planning. This is truly a labor of love for all of us. This is an all-volunteer endeavor. Um, and uh, we really take pleasure in seeing such a great turnout when the efforts are made. As most of you know, the California Consortium on Higher Education is committed to raising the quality of life for individuals with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. We want all youth and young adults to reach their potential. We believe that higher education offers the opportunity for a life of independence, personal growth, friendships, and new learning. Our mission is really twofold, and it's a mission that's been created in concert with many of you here in this room, which is the opportunity to pursue higher education and to develop the capacity of those of you that are charged with providing services, supports, education for our youth to have the capacity to make this goal a reality. So who are we, this consortium? Well, we're this big tent, as you can see by this room today. We're very proud of being a big tent, a place where people feel safe to have sometimes conversations that are difficult to have about practices within their agencies or schools or colleges, where they can share inspiring stories, where they present evidence-based practices, where we talk about what data shows that this idea of college works. And together, we have created this environment to learn, grow, and change at both the individual level and in our collective practices. We've been able to share our resources, knowledge, and support one another's efforts. And I think you see that in the conference schedule and plan for today. I also want to welcome you today on behalf of the consortium's executive committee. I use that term, executive committee, rather loosely. Uh, many of you have also heard me say that most of our meetings, well, they used to take place at Jerry's Deli, for those of you that know the Los Angeles area. I liked those meetings. They were a couple hours long. I liked my scrambled eggs. And uh, we used to have very in-depth discussions on sort of what if, what if, what if. And it's not what if anymore. It's happening. But I'd like them to at least raise their hand or stand up to be recognized for the hours spent in conversation, not so much anymore in person, but a lot of time on the phone in a lot of different uh, software configurations, whether it's GoToMeeting, Adobe, or some configuration or another. But best of all is I, I think that we, they should be acknowledged for their efforts. Mike Clark, where are you? <laughs> Car Carolyn, where are you? Lori Flynn, Jeff Ross, Will Francis, where are you? And Jerry Fujigami, who is not here with us today because she's busy doing another presentation in Sacramento. So we are all very pleased to see you here today. We know that over the last decade, because yes, our consortium is a decade old, we have seen the bar move in terms of post-secondary education from good idea to established practice. 
This has required champions in leadership. Leaders such as, Gary, as Greg Schultz and Larry Landauer today. It is my pleasure to introduce both of our special guests to our consortium today. And I'll tell you a little bit about both of them before they come up and make their, their, remark, their welcoming remarks. Dr. Greg Schultz is the provost of the North Orange County Community College District School of Continuing Education. For those of you that may not know, the School of Continuing Education is the fourth largest community college-based continuing education program in California, serving over 40,000 students each year at its three continuing education centers in Anaheim, Cyprus, and Fullerton, as well as 125 community locations. Dr. Schultz has extensive knowledge in continuing and communi community education with strengths in the areas of budget, outcome-based strategic planning, economic development, accreditation, career technical education, expanding curriculum and student services in both credit and non-credit programs. He has recently served on the AB86 statewide work group related to the Adult Educational Regional Consortia. But now for the real truth. My sources tell me, my personal sources tell me, that Greg is known to be supportive of all students, but that he has a special affinity for our students with students with intellectual disabilities. He trains with the Special Olympics basketball team, and he's very stealth. He brings along with him to these practices important people from within his university to get to know these youth, people who are responsible for money, budgets, people who are responsible for programs, people whose influence really can help push this forward, the idea of inclusive post-secondary education. And for that, we thank you. Larry Landauer, thank you for being here today. And I just heard that last Thursday that your regional center in Orange County passed an employment first policy. So one of the really effective things our consortium has done over the last year is pair the words post-secondary education with employment first. In fact, the state legislation, the state policy for employment first, and it should hearten all of us but make us really proud, includes in the legislation how important it is for youth or individuals with intellectual disabilities to be informed about opportunities for post-secondary education as a pathway to, um, to employment. So that is a very important pairing, both of what we are trying to achieve, this opportunity and the outcome of employment. Let me tell you a little bit about Larry. He has served individuals with developmental disabilities for over 27 years. He is the executive director of the Regional Center of Orange County. He's earned his bachelor's and master's degree in social work and he began his career at the Regional Center of Orange County in 1988 as a service coordinator. Over the next two decades, he worked his way up through the ranks, gaining experience and firsthand knowledge in virtually all aspects of Regional Center operations, from service coordination, area management, quality assurance, to the full range of community resources and public benefits for people with developmental disabilities and their families. I have other stealth, stealth sources that tell, told me a little bit about Larry as well. That he is tireless in his dedication to his work, that he is known to be a very early riser and to be first in the office and last to leave, and that what the consumers of the regional center appreciate is if you call his phone line, he's apt to answer the phone. So he can speak from the heart and can speak directly about the concerns for those that he's dedicated to serve. So welcome, Larry. So I'm now going to turn it over to Greg to make a few welcoming remarks, and then we'll bring Larry to the podium. Well, thank you, Dr. Rayner. Uh, good morning. It is a beautiful morning, and uh, 
I, want, I just want to say something about the traffic earlier. Boy, it's the planets just align. You know, you, you know LA for dense traffic, but things just were really smooth this morning. But it's so great to be here with each of you. It's an honor. Uh, my name is Greg Schultz, and it's my pleasure to share some brief welcome remarks with you today as we begin, begin our conference. Um, as it's mentioned, uh, it's my honor to serve as provost of the School of Continuing Education as part of the North Orange County Community College District. Um, in the School of Continuing Education, or SCE as we say, uh, we provide a variety of non-credit and adult education programs to meet the academic career and life needs of our community members. Our faculty and staff are committed to helping each student reach their academic career or life goal or goals. In response to this commitment, we proudly serve students with disabilities by offering a variety of pathways leading to workforce and job success, transition to college and university work, independent living, and many other options. Through our disabled students programs and services, we provide relevant skills, training, and build confidence in our students to successfully attain goals and achieve student success. In my own life and throughout my career, uh, education and support from others have always played a key role, certainly in the opportunities I've been able to access. As a result, my family and I have been able to experience opportunity that otherwise may not have been possible. That's just a fact. So I'm so privileged to work in higher education and in an environment that helps connect people to opportunities uh, of their own. I believe that though we're each different, there's many things we share in common, including a desire to access those types of opportunities and e the fact that each student deserves the opportunity to explore their interests and full potential, just like I got the chance to do, and gain access to relevant educational programs and services that are critical to accessing whatever opportunity they choose. Providing students with access to programs and services and giving them opportunity to succeed is everyone's responsibility. And at SCE, our organization, we recently discussed the role that each of us play in the context of ensuring that success. Um, from our faculty members and counselors to instructional assistants, uh, our support staff, other administrators, and myself, everybody has a role. From ensuring a welcoming, a nurturing environment, in the classroom to providing the support, encouragement, and systems that will enable each and every student to be successful in their chosen goal or objective. So today, it's just a pleasure to be with each of you who are deeply committed to this work. Uh, I want to share a personal thank you to the whole team at the UCLA Tarzan Center, and I'm looking forward to an exciting and worthwhile event today. So thank you. Good morning, thank you. This employment first policy that we all have, a new section of the Lanterman Act, some of you will relate, the 4869A1. I'm just gonna read a sentence. It is the policy of the state that opportunities for integrated competitive employment shall be given the highest priority for working age individuals with developmental disabilities, regardless of the severity of their disabilities. That really is landmark and that, and I'm, I have to give a shout out to um, Dr. White, my right arm, when it comes to this area, and a lot of you know that. That is her specialty in, in uh, her PhD. And Dr. White and I have worked very closely with, every, with many of you, um, from Greg Schultz and his, even his uh, sister, who's, who we hired at the Regional Center many years ago, Denise and uh, uh, Richard Rosenberg, we sit in a number of IPPs, special late night ones, even uh, meetings, and and uh, and then there's Linda O'Neill, who is amazing. I, I'm, I'm, and Olivia for pulling all this together. There's nothing nothing better than where we're heading, and where are we heading? As as mentioned on my board, uh, we had a retreat uh, three weeks after this was put into law, into the Lanterman Act, and it was our focus for the day with my board of directors, who are almost all parents and consumers. All are parents and consumers, except for one, and he's got a, a couple of nephews. 
and we, we went into how important meaningful work is. There is nothing, there's no service that the regional center gives that's more important. And some of you are saying, well, no, that's just the audience here. No, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> there is no more important job for us than to make sure consumers have meaningful work. It really does play into, am I gonna be good tonight wherever I'm living? Am I gonna have special behaviors? Am I gonna have problem areas? Work is no different than for them than it is for you and I. We, have you seen daytime TV? Oh God, we, way more commercials and pretty bad. We need to be productive, we need to be working. And work is natural because it is for all of us. And it has a reward system, what is that? I mean, Janice tells me I do a good job, I tell her I do a good job, but there's a paycheck too. It absolutely, you wanna talk about the behavioral stuff going on in some other rooms and other places, this has behavioral too. But if we do this right, it is the most important service that we can believe in. Talk to, talk to parents, because education, they're always scared. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen with the regional center? It's been so amazing from age three to 22 in most, a lot of cases. And now, what's the regional center gonna do? But we have to do as much as we can, and this presents an incredible opportunity, I think, for all the regional centers to really embrace and make sure, because the payoff is, is absolutely phenomenal. There's absolute payoff. And why, uh, we can all relate. And for many years, my first job was with Job Corps, Los Angeles Job Corps, 11th and Broadway, not far from here. Felipe's across the street is incredible. Um, okay, but I'm at Job Corps, where I worked full time for a couple of years, and then I moonlighted for about 11 years till midnight, um, six to midnight, uh, working there. What is that program about? It's about 16 to 22 year olds that had difficulties growing up and having a lot of problems in their lives. And what was Job Corps? You got them credentialed, you got them trained, you got them certificated, and they were productive citizens. And where'd that program come from? President Kennedy back uh, started the, uh, the Job Corps program, and it's still incredibly successful today. Why? It's work. We all know this. It's, it's innate in all of us. Work is the most important thing we can do. It will solve so many other more problems. So that's why the regional centers need to embrace this and catch on, because it really will help uh, in many, many different ways. So that's basically my conclusion, is we, we need to embrace this, and it's not, it's not hard to do it. Thank you, Olivia.